starting with top half. We're just going to do 30 to 5,000 to keep things moving here. All right, so six, let's start up with the cut, top half. All right, right to the water, heel, left, left, right to the middle. Five strokes, pausing at half slide. Ten strokes, continuing with the fifth. On behalf of the Washington University Hall of Fame, it is my honor to present the induction from the class of 1975, a champion of equal rights for female athletes and a true pioneer in rowing, Jean Friedman. I don't think we consciously set out to create a legacy. We set out to be serious athletes, to push ourselves physically and mentally for the pure joy of pushing ourselves physically and mentally. It was just a small group, and it meant um, meeting with the men's coach and saying, saying 60 women showed up at a meeting and expressed an interest in rowing, so we'd like to start a program. The excuses that came were astounding. The boats are too heavy. You'll never be able to carry them out of the, out of the boathouse. You'll get blisters on your hands. There's no time in the day. And at every turn, our response was, we're in. We will do it. Just give us the opportunity. I had never played a team sport before rowing. I, I was a transfer, I didn't know anybody, and I thought, these are the people, these are my people. Saw a poster hanging that announced an exploratory meeting um, to investigate uh, women's rowing. I went to the meeting and I saw an eight rowing on the lake. And I went, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I got a call at work from Hugh Foley, who had, was the varsity coach for the men and had been my coach and asked if I would help him get rid of these 600 women that wanted to row. You know, we, we were not really welcome initially. And we were rowing at 5.30 in the morning because we weren't allowed in the boathouse in the afternoons when the guys were there. And he figured that would get rid of 95% of them, and it didn't, so. M many of us were avid feminists and could not wait for a fight. And we're walking over the BU Bridge and everybody is just fit to be tied over, you know, this conflict that we're about to have with the provost. Yeah, he would let us use the only four in the boathouse that no one had used in five years. Once in a while, he'd let us use these broken down pairs that had been in collisions on, with bridges and other boats. That was actually our first race, and we were rowing in that heavy boat with the mismatched riggers and mismatched oars. We were terrific, and we actually won that race, I think by 10 seconds. It was so powerful. So that was what my... We had gone to the national championships and won at the national championships. Then we had gone to the Canadian Henley and won there. We were on top of the world. It was a very, very exciting time in terms of discovering your own potential as an athlete. What you all did here as undergraduates, most of your peers are either unwilling or unable to do that, and that makes you special. You're in the rowing fraternity. It doesn't matter if I'm 50 years old and you're two years old. You're an oarswoman or an oarsman, you're special. There are different kinds of winning. There's winning on the water, which we're always trying to do. But then there's the wins of helping a young woman recognize in herself a power and an autonomy that she may not have known that she had, um, that she's capable of things personally, athletically, that maybe she didn't realize. And if I can have some role in that, that's a win for me too.
guess I did see that we were clearing the path for those women that came after us. Rowing and women's sports in general have gained a higher status within athletic departments and within culture as a whole. There's 90 Division I programs. There's a lot of women's rowing. Well, it's the strongest group of women I'll ever know on many levels because you have to be able to endure unbearable pain and know that everybody behind you and in front of you is counting on you. It changed my life forever, probably saved my life. These are the most precious friendships I have. What I learned is that um, I'm very strong for a five foot four woman, and I didn't know that previously. What I learned and what I carried with me was what I learned in my team. It was the power of the team, the depth of the friendships and the knowledge of one another, and um, the fact that if we worked hard enough, we really could get there. This is possible. I learned to be persistent. I learned to compromise. I learned a lot about humility. I learned also that if something didn't seem right, I was gonna step up. And you know what I loved about rowing at the time? Because you were walk-ons and you were made into athletes. You were molded into athletes. And I was fascinated by that. highlight of my life. I've had a lot of good fortune and rowing is right up there. This is where it all begins.